Hey everyone, and welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, the Heart Shift Coach, and I have a wonderful guest with me today for day nine, Mel Robertson, and she's come all the way from California just to share in these conversations with us. And before we get started, we were actually talking about the significance of September 9th for both of us, which is so um, serendipitous that we are here together like this. So Mel, tell me something. Why is the nine so significant to you? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here with you today, Marcy. It's an honor to always be here with you, getting a chance to have a conversation with you, and especially about such an important topic as peace right now. Mm -hmm. For me, the number nine has always meant the conjunction or the communion of the human with the divine. So it's our human coming into communion with the divine so that we can transmute our lower frequency vibrations and be raised up to the divine because it's all about eventually ascending out of the physical body and becoming one with the divine. So amazing. Um, I love the way numbers play such an impact on us. You know, when we are aware of our reaction or response, or we hear something of that nature, and it just resonates with us so well. So nine has always resonated with me as well. And as a matter of fact, you know, I find myself sort of looking for them at, you know, at times. So um, thank you so much for being here. And you're right, this is such an important topic, particularly at this time. And just to give a little recap about what we've been talking about and particularly what um, the conversation revolved around yesterday was that we have choice. Every single step along the way, we have choice as to which energies we are feeding. And all we need to do is take a look at whatever we are considering to be a void in our surrounding, in our environment, and to remember that we have the ability to create and to fill in that void with what it is that we want to be experiencing instead. It's part of our birthright. And I know a lot of people, you know, maybe even those who have been listening to these conversations. <laughs> you know, your eyes roll to the back of your head. You're like, oh, there she goes again, kind of a thing. Um, but this is so important that each of us really, really embraces because I know the whole topic of manifestation is one that sometimes people think is a separate topic, right, for life. But in fact, we are creating, we are manifesting. And I have spoken about how our energy field is really a mirror for all of the energy that is sort of vying for position, uh, for our attention, and how our field mirrors that. It actually is mirroring what we are putting our t attention on, what we are putting our focus on. So one of the reasons that I thought it was so important for you to come here um, and to talk about peace with us, because I know that you've had numerous times in your life where you were not at peace. You were clearly struggling with different aspects of life. And I thought, God, there was ever an expert. It has to be you, Mel. Seriously. Because life has, has made you this incredible example of how when things seem to be gone awry, how they get right again. So first off, what is peace to you? Mm. I think for me, peace is just, it's the ultimate calm and unshakability, no matter what's going on in your life, whether there be chaos or disorder, that there's always this 
this underlay of calm and you can be unaffected by all the things that are going on around you and remain true and on center. And it's not only just peace, but it's an unconditional joy and everlasting joy that, that bubbles up from the inside out and just permeates through everything that you do. Hmm. How did you come to that definition? Definitely through lots of experience of not being peaceful. <laughs> it's amazing I, how powerful contrast is. We absolutely need contrast in order to be able to experience peace. I, I truly believe that you can't experience joy or peace unless you've been able to experience the corresponding pain and suffering because the pendulum swings both ways equally and I feel it dips down first. And if you can feel the pain and be present for the pain, then you get to experience the corresponding joy and peace. So that's why there's some of us that are just bleh and just no up and down at all. And then some of us have really high highs and really high, really low lows. And I'm one of those people that I can take the train all the way to the depths of Hades and then I can come back out unscathed and soar with the eagles wow. because I'm willing to feel it all. Ah, well, I think you brought up a very good point, feeling. So why do you think people are afraid to take that journey into creating peace? Fear is absolutely the ultimate. It's a fear. I think there's so much fear about feeling our feelings and what's going to happen. I talked to so many people who I actually posted on Facebook the other day that I cry and I sweat daily as a form of decluttering. And someone wanted to jump on the phone with me to see if I was okay because I cried every day. They didn't think that that was okay. And for me, you have to be able to, you have to be able to feel emotions are energy in motion. They need to stay moving. And if we don't feel them, they get stuck and they become that clutter. And I think that, I know for me, when after I'd been through a lot of trauma, like losing my brother and being molested and going through a lot of abuse, that the fear about feeling was that it was never going to stop. If I let the tears flow, they were just never going to end. I was going to cry forever. Well, that's obviously not the case. Most of the time, I'm pretty joyful, but I get to allow myself to feel whatever comes up in each moment. And by being willing to experience the feelings as they arise in each moment, they only last 90 seconds. It's what we continue to think about the story, the story we tell ourselves about the situation that drags the emotion on even longer. But if we can just acknowledge the feeling and let it be there and fully experience it, then it moves on and does its thing. And then we're fine. And then we have more joy. We have more space. We have more freedom. We have more peace. So you bring up another good point then. So what you're describing is, is that when we are not in peace, this fear about working towards peace may mean that we have to give up being out of peace. And that might actually be the fear, giving up that patterning of the thoughts, giving up the patterning of behavior, giving up um, everything that has been defining you in terms of whatever you've experienced that has, you know, sort of set you on the other side of that scale. And so how do, how do you help people to find that courage to let go of what had defined them. So if we can just back up for a second, because you mentioned your brother, you mentioned um, experiencing trauma through abuse and different things. I know that there was also a time in your life where you did everything you could to numb yourself yeah. from feeling. So I guess my question is, Number one, during those times that you were numbing yourself, did the thought of peace actually ever come into your consciousness? And if it did, were you fearful of it? Fearful of who you would become if you went in that direction? 
Yeah, I think for a long time I was numbing myself because everything was so intense to actually, it felt so intense to to be present with it. I The fear of that I was going to be overwhelmed by the emotions, it was much easier to choose the way I was going to feel being high on different drugs. I got to choose how I was going to feel rather than have to experience whatever was going to arise. And I think that there was a lot of fear that I would never get to a point where I would be able to be present with it, that I was always going to struggle with addiction and just wind up using drugs for the rest of my life until I got to a point where I just wound up dead on the streets. And I think that was the biggest fear, um, wishing that I could feel peace and wishing that I, I remember reading um, a lot of Buddhist principles and the, I think it was like the precepts of non-harming and right speech and right action. And I remember one of the things it would say is to refrain from the heedless use of intoxicants. And I could get all the other pieces, but it was like this one piece I knew that I just kept struggling with and I didn't think that I was ever going to overcome. And it was, it was through being courageous and willing and willing enough to learn how to be present with myself without any of the drugs, without any of the alcohol, without any of that external stuff that I started to know what real peace was. But it was definitely a fearful in being willing to let all that go and be willing to turn my attention inwards. But once I started to do that, then the peace that I got from doing that far outweighed any drug I could ever do. Quite an amazing realization that you had. Um, and I, I can't help but think that part of what you are relating is actually what is happening with people even as they're living sort of an ordinary everyday life and getting caught up in all of the fear and the chaos and um, the confusion of the times, the deep challenges of the times, you know, and almost like part of the challenge being that it's easier almost to stay there absolutely than it is to take on this journey towards peace that's going to require that you look inside what do we do about that well first i just want to share i, I read this study and I don't remember all the details, but basically we're, we're so afraid of being quiet with ourselves and we avoid being with ourselves so much that there was this study done where humans were asked to sit in a room alone with no windows and no distraction, just sit with themselves for a very short period of time, about 15 minutes, if I remember correctly. And they had the option to just sit still and be quiet. You could do whatever, you could daydream, you could do whatever, twiddle your thumbs. You didn't have a phone, you didn't have games. You just had to sit with yourself or you could choose to give yourself an electric shock. Oof. Over 50% of men chose to shock themselves repeatedly over and over again. And over 24% of women chose to shock themselves rather than sit still and be present with themselves. We spend our entire lives running, running, running away from ourselves and avoiding ourselves on every level. That's why our calendars are so busy and we don't have time. And that's why we're so stressed out and depleted is that we just avoid, 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 avoid. And we try to keep like a cork underwater that eventually pops up and hits us in the face and then explodes into everybody else around us and causes nothing but chaos instead of peace. Do you think that part of the chaos that we're seeing um, is in reaction to a lot of the population needing that sort of stimulus in order to feel alive. In other words, we know that there are adrenaline junkies, right? And I think, you know, what you're describing with that study sort of frames that for us, right? Puts a spotlight on it because, you know, it is that constant, you know, stimuli and whether it's painful or not, that 
very often makes us feel like we are alive, like we're, we're doing something, right? <laughs> and yet we know that in order to create real sustainable change, it can only happen in the stillness. Yes. It can only happen when we come into ourselves. And as you said earlier, you know, be willing to take a look and be accountable. And, you know, it's so interesting because in my private membership group, which is 2020 Hindsight to Foresight, we're talking about accountability this month mm. and what a superpower it is, but also how difficult it is. And I think some of that has to do with exactly as you described earlier on. You know, we, we know that it may be painful looking at ourselves, taking responsibility, saying, oh yeah, that was my choice to do that, and no longer being victimized. And I think that we might be seeing an awful lot of that going on right now, do you think? Definitely. Most definitely, and I think we, we spend so much time doing instead of being, and ultimately the outside is a mirror of the inside, whether it's clutter in your environment or the chaos that's, that, you're, that you're seeing around you, because the outside just mirrors the inside. And I don't, I don't watch the news, I don't really know what's going on in the world, so for me, my world is really peaceful because I'm not, I'm not immersed in it, and that's a mirror reflection of the peace that I have inside of myself. But if you're having chaos on the outside, it just means that there's chaos going on in the inside. And the minute that you can come home and be present with that and make space, you make peace inside, then the outside, the way you see the outside changes. And Gandhi says it best, like, be the change you wish to see. If That's you right. want peace in the world, you need to be peace. If you want the turmoil to cease, you need to release the turmoil within yourself. You need to release the prejudice and the hatreds within yourself in order to affect peace in the world. And once one person does it, then it makes it easier for the people around them to do it. And then it winds up becoming a hundredth monkey effect. And then we can affect peace on earth. Right. But it starts within. Absolutely. And I've had some interesting comments about these conversations, right? and people's reactions. And a lot of it is, you know, <sighs> I, I get that a lot. <laughs> and like I said, people rolling their eyes and, you know, right, there's nothing I can do about that. That's happening in Minneapolis or happening in Seattle or happening here or happening there. And, you know, I remind people that the Berlin Wall came down because of one heart that started the entire initiation of energy when it decided, this is not working for me. This isn't working for me to be separated from my family, my friends, my lovers, my, you know, businesses, my this, my that. That's how the dismantling of the Berlin Wall came down, one heart. And so what we're doing is we're looking for hearts that are willing to step forward and say, this isn't working for me. I can look at you and I can see everything that's happening. But rather than seeing ourselves separate from it, to actually bring it into our hearts, which is the only place where that energy can be shifted. Mm -hmm. We must bring it into our hearts. The more that we keep it separate from us and try to pretend that there is nothing that we can do, it will always remain as something we need to fear. And we need to take responsibility because if the outside is a mirror of the inside, we are contributing to that chaos. The more we're not willing to look and bring peace within ourselves, if we're chaotic inside and our thoughts are chaotic and negative, then that's all we're creating. And so what's happening in Minneapolis or what's happening over here, we not, may not be there, but we are a part of it. And we have to yes. take full responsibility 
for our, for our actions because we are a part of the whole and we, we have to do our own work in order for anything to change. That's right. And in order for that to do, to happen, I might say, we have to know how we want to change it, right? What, what do we want instead? What do we want instead? Do we want to create a, an opportunity for all people to be heard? Do we want to create opportunities for all people to feel that they are connected and precious and important? Or do we want to continue to create these aspects of us that pit one part of ourselves against the other? Because that's what's happening. We are at war within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so in doing so, we cannot possibly create that peace. So tell me something. And I have to ask this question because there was this time when you were on the streets and you were numbing yourself with the drugs. Did the conversations that you have with others, were you still talking about coming back to your truth? Absolutely. Or was it like completely separate from you? It definitely wasn't completely separate. It was always on my mind. It was just, I had this, I didn't know how I was gonna get out of using drugs or how to stop. But I was so conscious of my vibration still that one of the things that I use, even high all the time, one of the things that I used to do was I still wanted to spread love and joy. And I would walk up and down the streets and I would make eye contact. I would, I would do an experiment and see how many people would actually make eye contact with me and say hi in return if I said hi to them because so many people will not. But on days that I was feeling really negative and down, I refused to look at people because I didn't want to exude that into their feeling. I didn't want to spread that energy so I would keep that energy to myself. So I was very aware of how my energy was affecting others and still wanting peace in my life, but not being able to overcome the drug and alcohol portion of it. So I think, I think what we're you know, understanding from what you've shared then is that when things are of our true nature, we're never really separate from them. All the drugs, all the alcohol, all of the this, all of the that, underneath it all was still this desire to be peaceful, to be, to be connected to your true self. And <laughs> amazingly to share love and peace with people. But it, it shows us how powerful this is because it's against all odds. That need is still there. And I don't think that that was necessarily unique to you, although you're such a beautiful individual. Thank you. But it's so powerful within us. And when we learn how to tap into it, tune into it, and we just let it run free, it will lead us. I think a lot of the times we're so afraid, we just don't know what to do, right? Where to start? which direction to go in. And so it becomes an excuse for us not to doing anything. But I think that everything that you've shared has really shown us that this is so deeply ingrained within us. We can never be separate from it. It is the most powerful part of us. Absolutely. And so it's our creator. I mean, love created the universe, love created us. I mean, that is the essence of who we are. It just gets clouded by all these other things. Yeah. You can never take the true essence away. You can only hide it and try to dim, dim it. But even that doesn't really work. Nope. I said try. <laughs> <laughs> Still there. 
Well, I want to thank you for coming on today and talking about peace. I think these conversations are so important. And I think what you've just shared is so valuable because there are lots of people who have all kinds of issues that they are dealing with um, emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, lots of people dealing with addictions um, of all kinds, you know, alcohol, drug abuse, many other kinds and that it may be shadowing their, their essence. But the truth is, is that, again, we can tap in, we can tune into the true, true power of our beingness. And so we come back to choice, don't we? We do. Come back to choice over and over and over again. And how essential it is, number one, that we remember that we have choice at all times. Number two, that we exercise it for our highest good so that it's working for us to the best of our ability. Any last words, Mel, that you'd like to share with our peacemakers today? Be courageous and be willing to just turn your attention inward and find the peace within yourself because that's ultimately the only way that you can change the world is to change yourself. So if you're not at peace within yourself, if you're constantly allowing yourself to be bombarded by all the things that are happening in the world and allowing that to cause stress and anxiety and fear within you, you can only, the thoughts that you keep thinking about it will only generate more like things happening in your life because thought creates reality. So the minute that you can bring peace within yourself and stop being bombarded all that by all of that and feel peace within yourself, you'll start to notice more peace around you and it will only grow exponentially. And then it's going to help the people around you feel more at peace and they're going to help the people feel around them more at peace. And it's just going to grow so we can have peace on earth. So it starts within you. Just be willing to turn your attention from out there to in here and find peace within. And if you need a peace buddy, reach for them. Everybody wants it. And then maybe between you and your friend or your friends, you'll be able to become stronger and more courageous to create and cultivate even more and more and more and more. And practice makes perfect. Absolutely. So practice peace every day in every way that you possibly can. That's right. And if you need a peace buddy, just find me on Facebook, private message me. I'm always available. And by the way, um, how do they find you on Facebook? Um, it's uh, Mel Mason uh, uh, is my private Facebook page or Decluttering Spaces is my group page. So you can, you and I are friends, so you can find me there. You can just email me at info at decluttering Okay, great. And do you have a website? Yeah, decluttering spaces.com. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for giving us your precious time. And for everyone listening, thank you for giving us your precious time and your attention. And we certainly hope that you have been touched by some of what we've shared today and that it will have landed and that you do step out of whatever issues, whatever patterns you've been in that have kept you separate from peace and know that it's here for you. All right. So many blessings to you all. Peace in, peace out. Yep. And always. Until next time, have a peaceful, peaceful day. Bye-bye.